Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to this third tutorial for Nebuchadnezzar. During this video I am going to show you how to make money, gold in this game, from several exporting trade routes, import goods for production of advanced goods, which we are going to use to bring aristocrats into the city to their residences, level up townsfolk villas to their second level and peasants homes to their fourth and maximum level by supplying them with additional goods, services and making their surroundings more appealing. Also I am going to explain to you how to set up these advanced services like administration and religion as well as how to beautify the space around homes to increase the appeal necessary to level up the citizens homes. My name is Peter and up here and in the description you will find a link to my other tutorial videos about Nebuchadnezzar. I have played up to the point just before the temple's monument is to be constructed so you will not have to wait and I have supplied the warehouses with tablets necessary for administration service to be running while the beer has been maxed out in the warehouses for future use both for peasants leveling up and export so money can be made from trade. Additionally I have added more villas and supplied them with dates and fish to gain more of the townsfolk workforce. Now we can unpause and speed up the game to see the temple's final construction step take shape. The instant it is completed our total prestige rating is high enough to unlock new trade routes. This one is with the city of Magan which I explained in the previous tutorial and it exports copper which we need and imports beer which we can produce. A gift of beer which we have stockpiled will start this trade route and just in time since we are low on money gold in this game. In the trade window we are now going to set the amount of beer to sell each time a trade ship docks in our port. The maximum is the warehouse capacity which is 36 units. This is what the caravaners will transfer from here. But our production is currently paused because we do not have enough peasant workforce. This we can increase by removing the brick makers which we no longer need and turning off the extra clay pits which were supplying them. The remaining production will make sure we have enough ceramics for use and later export. With the freed up peasants we can turn on the farm producing barley and the brewers producing beer where townsfolk mostly work. One thing that needs some correction is the low stockpile of bread. This takes a small redistribution of farming plots, an additional farm for grain with new farming plots and an extra bakery. With this done we can check the food supplies for villas. Here fish seems to be low and we can add a new fishery to max out the supply. A bit of dates was left behind in the wrong warehouse but this is nothing a single pass by a caravaner cannot fix. And with food levels high we should add more townsfolk. This means new villas. The design can remain the same. Villas sandwiched between small chip gardens with decorative roads around them. Just keep in mind to check your food distributor's paths from the markets so that new villas will have access to food. And speaking of food, dates production can be increased with some overflow which we can even export later on. These new villas produce more prestige for our city and this unlocks a completely new trade route. Since we have warehouses full of ceramics we can instantly unlock this one and export ceramics from now on. The lack of peasants workforce can be solved by removing the now unnecessary date caravan and the bricks caravan for the same reason. Now to start up the import of copper we need a new warehouse in the range of the trade port set to only accept copper and set the amount of copper we want to import in the trade window. When something like this pops up you should send the goods required to the other cities because this will improve your relations with them and the trade goods prices. With the import set we need a place for the copper workshops so the imported copper can be turned into copper jewelry by townsfolk for future leveling of townsfolk villas. A warehouse for jewelry is also a must and set for caravaners to load goods. The warehouse in the townsfolk's area need to be set for unloading the green arrow. Since clay is currently overproduced some extra peasants for the copper jewelry caravan can be freed up at one of the clay pits. Now because we want to save up beer for leveling up peasants homes and townsfolk workers for production of jewelry we will turn off beer and barley production and export ceramics instead of beer. A new caravan will take care of the transportation. If you have free townsfolk you should increase the production of copper jewelry as you will need a lot of it later on. So if you have been enjoying this tutorial please do not mind me asking you to support me and my channel by hitting that like button below, commenting about your favorite isometric city builder and even subscribing if you haven't already. Now about leveling up those villas. The religion services are already in place from the last tutorial episode but what we need here is another standard market across from the copper jewelry warehouse and the distributors for it. This quickly levels up the villas and raises our prestige score which results in even more trade routes being unlocked. You can use the overlays to check the distribution of both religion service and copper jewelry. 
The spacious villa is aptly named as it has a lot more room for many more townsfolk to live in. If any of the villas do not level up, make sure to check its appeal level as it should be above 9 for the second level. Keep your eye on the distribution of goods and add more production and the import of raw goods like copper if and when you see the need. As long as you have stable food production for the townsfolk, feel free to add even more villas. As we have run out of the peasant workers, we should level up their homes to their next and last level. Again, this requires some new workers as well for the administration building and the tablets workshop which means a few completely new shacks is the best choice here. But once those are constructed and new workers have moved in, we should go for the main prize. Administration building on, administrators to go on to distribution path and new distributors of beer from the fourth poor market. One advice here, start slow with few new homes leveling up to level 4 to see can you supply them constantly. Besides the beer and administration, level 4 homes for peasants also require a bit of appeal which we will add with decorated roads very cheaply. These homes will now spend beer and since we have new peasant workers, we will enable barley production as well as breweries. The administration building spends tablets, which means we have to employ townsfolk in tablet workshops to have a constant supply. If you want to further boost copper jewelry production, you can add another warehouse in the ports range and increase the import quantity past 36. If you want to have more level 4 peasant homes or export to earn money, you will require more beer. So for that, you will have to add another barley farm and more breweries. In case you start feeling like I am speeding past some of the production and building chains, it is because I have already laid out all of this in great detail in my previous tutorials for Nebuchadnezzar, which you can watch following the links up here and in the description. If you start running out of any foods or goods, like I did milk here, Simply level up more peasants' homes to their maximum level and use the new workers for the new farms to once again have ample production of base goods and food. If you end up lacking money, it is best to open up new trade routes and export whichever goods you are or can overproduce and have a city to export them to. For my city here, that good is dates. Heliopolis will buy my dates and I have a nice spot for a new farm to increase the production. So now we come to the main event actually providing the requirements for the aristocracy. These are furniture and meat. Both we can produce locally, but wood is required for furniture and that we cannot produce, so we will have to import it from Nineveh. The problem? That city wants seals or papyrus as a gift for them to open up that trade route, neither of which we have or can produce right now. But luckily, Heliopolis sells papyrus, so all we need to do is to import the same amount Nineveh requires and send it to them as a gift. To do so, we will add a warehouse which will import exclusively papyrus and set the desired amount and voila, it's done. Stop importing first, then send the papyrus gift to Nivnev from where we can now import wood. Before opening up new workshops for furniture and meat, we can upgrade more peasants and townsfolk homes so we gain extra workforce and add any production capacity for food or goods which seems lacking. Carpenters require a warehouse from where they will take imported wood from as well as one warehouse to store the finished goods at. Meat is a bit more complex to produce as you need fertile land for a livestock farm, plots for the animals to graze on, a warehouse to store the uncut meat and a butcher to process it into fresh meat for the luxurious market. We can place the residences here as there is no pollution. The mentioned luxurious market has to be near two warehouses one for each new good aristocrats require. Furniture and meat, meaning two additional caravans, are a must. Take note of the fact that the distribution in the luxurious market is done by townsfolk and not peasants who are just haulers here. The last requirement for residences is a really high appeal score of the surrounding area, which is achieved by placing expensive beautifications like flowers, fountains, gardens and even small monuments and different kinds of decorated roads. Once distributors drop off furniture and meat and the pill goes up past 16 points, aristocrats will finally move in. But now you might be wondering what will it take to level these folks to their maximum level? Well, I will leave this for one of my future videos. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!